Have you ever wondered what exactly is the universe made of? According to the cosmological model, our universe was born 13.7 billion years ago by a huge explosion that gave birth to our space like we know it nowadays, the Big Bang. Everything that exists was born in that immense explosion. Science development led us to more and more sophisticated and accurate technology to investigate the cosmos. And little by little, astronomers and physicists have learned a lot about the universe, discovering stars, stardust, planets, satellites, asteroids, galaxies, nebula, clusters of galaxies, and so on. Until recently, we thought to be well advanced in the comprehension of matter distribution around the universe. Nevertheless, starting from the last century, observations suggest that there is far more to discover. As a matter of fact, all that exists in the universe seems to be much more than what we can detect. The mass we can see and measure is only a minimum fraction of the whole universe. Yes, because the larger amount of matter is invisible and undetectable by our instruments. It's like an immense halo that permeates the cosmos without emitting, absorbing, and reflecting nor light, neither electromagnetic waves. This is the dark side of the universe. This is dark matter. Now, physicists assess that only the 15% of the matter in the universe is made up of detectable ordinary mass. The overwhelming majority is made up of something that we can't detect directly, so scientists called it dark matter. The name dark is due to the fact that it doesn't shine, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't reflect light or any other electromagnetic radiation. We detect its presence by indirect effects only. It's like a phantom. We can't see it. It's completely invisible. Wait, what? How is that possible? Curious to know how? Stick with us and we'll tell you how it's possible in this video. What is dark matter? What exactly is it made of? Where can we find it? How can we know that it exists and how we measure it? How is it arranged in the universe? How much dark matter is there? To answer all these questions, we need to step back. So let's rewind the tape a bit and go back in time. The story of dark matter, the first evidence in rotational velocities. Since the end of the 19th to the beginning of the 20th century, Many scientists were interested in so-called obscure stars and dark gases, little luminous matter that couldn't be identified with telescopes. In 1877, Italian priest Angelo Secchi, expert in stellar spectroscopy, in a paper asked himself questions about the presence of scattered dark masses in space. In 1933, the Swiss physicist Fritz Zwicky was trying to understand the behavior of clusters of galaxies. In particular, while observing a cluster of a thousand galaxies in the Coma Berenices, 150 million light years away from here, he found some anomalies in their motion. In fact, they were rotating with a speed about 100 times faster than what the theory expected, as if the total mass of the cluster was about 400 times higher than it was. In other words, the gravity effect of the cluster was too low for such fast orbits. Therefore, Zwicky argued that there had to be much more gravity and more mass than what appeared to keep together these galaxies with those high rotational speeds. The Swiss were the first to use the term dark matter to express that lack of matter. If these observations were confirmed, we will get the surprising result that dark matter is present in larger amounts than luminous matter, he said. Unfortunately, Zwicky wasn't very popular within the astronomer community because of his short-tempered behavior. Therefore, at his time, his idea was considered absurd and set aside. Six years later, the astronomer Horace Badcock observed other anomalies in the motion of stars in the Andromeda galaxy. As a matter of fact, their rotation speeds, while proceeding towards the outskirts, didn't slow down in contrast to gravitational theory. Nevertheless, so far this was considered an issue due to a mistake in the process of measurement because of technical limitation. It was essentially believed that the missing mass was made of faint stars, planets, meteors, scattered gas in interstellar spaces. Several decades passed and the thing came back to surface thanks to the work in 1974 of some Princeton cosmologists who claimed that there are good reasons to believe that the mass of galaxies had been underestimated by a factor of 10 or more. The turning point occurred at the end of the 70s when American astronomer Vera Rubin was working on the motion of spiral galaxies. 
and assessed the same thing that Zwicky claimed 40 years before. Rubin and her colleague Ford had studied and measured the rotation curves of about 20 galaxies and had found that moving away from the center of mass, velocities didn't decrease. According to that data, galaxies couldn't stay in balance. They should have flaked off with the outer stars departing for the tangent. There had to be much more mass in there. To understand this concept and explain all these conclusions, we need to do a short digression about Newton's gravitational and Kepler's laws. Kepler's laws are deduced directly by Newton's gravitation. All rotational systems that can be modeled as a heavy central mass with some smaller and lighter objects orbiting around it can be investigated by applying Kepler's laws. The rotational speed only depends on the distance from the central mass and on the matter amount in the center, and do not depend on their masses. It is therefore expected that proceeding towards the outskirts, the rotational speed decreases. If this doesn't occur, the obvious way to resolve this discrepancy is to conclude that the mass amount is higher and postulate the presence of non-luminous matter, dark matter, to balance the system. The scientific community was still skeptical about dark matter, so it was fundamental to find another method, using another independent data set to compare results. Before we continue to look at dark matter, be sure to like or dislike the video, so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel, clicking the bell so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Second evidence of dark matter, the gravitational lens effect. Nowadays, we have another instrument to assess the amount of dark matter in the galaxies. According to Einstein's general relativity, if we interpose a mass between a distant electromagnetic source and an object that we're observing, since the mass curves space-time, this mass will act as a lens to bend the light from this source. The more massive an object, the more lensing is observed. By measuring the distortion geometry, the mass of the object can be deduced. If the gravitational lens mass is a galaxy, we can get its mass by studying images with the gravitational lens effect. The mass of galaxies calculated with gravitational lens method is in reasonable agreement with galaxy rotation curves. The amount of dark matter assessed was 10, even 100 times the amount of ordinary matter. Therefore, the universe appeared made up of dark matter with some little amounts of ordinary matter. This was the outstanding conclusions that originally led scientists to deny its presence. Today, we also know that the distribution of dark matter is quite bizarre. It isn't uniform as well. What is most intriguing is the halo arrangement around galaxies. If we move from the center towards the outskirts, ordinary matter decreases whereas dark matter increases. The same goes to clusters of galaxies. For example, in the Milky Way, the amount of ordinary and dark matter are comparable. By contrast, outside of it, dark matter becomes dominant. The universe is made up of bubbles of dark matter in which galaxies swim like ducklings. Third evidence of the presence of dark matter, the cosmic background radiation, CMB. According to cosmology, we all know that the universe was born 13.7 billion years ago from a huge explosion, the Big Bang. Nowadays, we have detected evidence of the Big Bang's origin, its cosmic background radiation, CMB. This was discovered for the first time in 1964 by physicist Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson during radio astronomy and satellite communication experiments. This is an electromagnetic radiation permeating uniformly throughout the universe as a remnant from an early stage of the universe. It is the oldest electromagnetic radiation in the universe. That's why it's an important source of data. According to the COBE satellite sent into orbit from 1998 to 1993 to measure CMB around the universe, cosmic background radiation is not constant throughout the universe, but fluctuates slightly. In fact, there are colder and warmer areas. These differences are called anisotropies. But why are we talking about CMB? How is CMB related to dark matter? It's easy to say. According to the analysis of this radiation, it was possible to have a precise reconstruction of the mass composition of the universe. In fact, if we draw a graph of the fluctuation of cosmic radiation, this provides us a data set on dark matter. From the curve we obtain, in fact, we deduce that the mass of the universe cannot be made of ordinary matter only. Otherwise, we would find a different graph. The result of the fluctuation of the background radiation tells us that there is a huge amount of matter 
that doesn't interact with electromagnetic rays, and therefore we can neither see nor detect it directly. According to the numbers, after gravitational lens effects and the spiral galaxy's rotational curves, also this alternative approach shows that dark matter represents about 80% of the total mass of the universe. What is dark matter? What is it made of? Over the course of time, many hypotheses have been formulated. At first, this missing mass was thought to belong to invisible stars and gases that could, however, emit radiation. As a matter of fact, there is a lot of mass of this type around the universe, but its amount is far lower than the missing mass and is not enough to explain dark matter. Then the focus was on macho, massive, compact, halo objects, particles, not emitting heavy objects like black holes, neutron stars, white and brown dwarf stars. After years of observations, astronomers assessed their effective presence, but their total mass, deduced using their gravitational lens effects, is lower again, because it would represent 15% at most of what we would expect as dark matter. All these failures led to the formulation of non-ordinary matter theories to justify dark matter. The most popular is WIMP, Weakly Interactive Massive Particles Theory. WIMP particles are massive particles that would interact very weakly. According to the theory, WIMP have still been found in the early stages of formation of the universe. They would interact with ordinary mass, annihilating, maintaining a kind of balance. At a certain moment, however, because of the rapid expansion of space, these interactions would stop. And by that time, dark matter particles had remained unchanged until today. To detect WIMP, if they exist, we have different ways. We can try to reveal them in our particle accelerators like LHC or CERN in Switzerland, hoping to observe the energy released when dark matter, in particular conditions, interacts with ordinary matter. Alternatively, we can build ad hoc detectors sheltered from energy interferences and cosmic particles, like the Xenon-110 experiment at the Gran Sasso Laboratory in Italy or the Super Kamiokande detector in Japan. Eventually, we can always hope to detect some WIMP's interaction events with ordinary matter directly in the cosmos by means of our radio telescopes. So far, it should be noted that no WIMP has been detected by any of these huge experiments. Conclusions Physicists now believe that dark matter is approximately 85% of the whole mass in the universe and represents about a quarter of its total mass energy density. These proportions are quite outstanding and flip our point of view on the universe. Matter as we all know it represents a negligible and almost ridiculous quantity of the whole mass in the universe. On the one hand, more and more exciting discoveries are yet to come, but on the other hand, it's so shocking and upsetting that all we can see is just a myth in an immensity that we still cannot understand. You can say everything about dark matter, except that it goes unnoticed. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Did you find dark matter exciting? Is there something more you want to know about dark matter and its relationship with the universe as we know it today? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.